Jose Colombo was a drum maker from Tolosa, Argentina. I recently came across some percussion instruments by Colombo Percussion. I was on a house call to look at a set of vintage drums, and uh, while I was there, um, the owner of the drums mentioned that he had some old congas he'd be selling, and I was very interested in that, of course. So um, I asked if I could see the drums, and uh, he took me to a storage room in the house, and uh, he actually had uh, a pair of congas, timbales, and a bongo. At that time, these drums were mixed in with a lot of other things in the storage room, and it was, I couldn't look at the drums up close, and I had to go back a second time and really look things over. So in the meantime, before my second visit, I was able to do a little research on the company and found that there was not a lot of information available. Um, there is a good documentary that was made a couple of years ago uh, called Colombo. It's on YouTube. Um, so that that's a great resource. Other than that, I found a little bit of information in a conga forum, and that's really about it. So when I saw the congas in particular, uh, because I did manage to, on my first visit, get one of the congas in my hands. Um, I didn't know what to make of them because they looked so unusual. They, they had a leatherette finish. The, the crown hoop comfort rim was um, unusual looking. They looked like parts from a sports car almost. This combination of, of uh, chrome detail and leatherette finish. So um, I decided to buy the whole collection brought them home, had a look through everything. There's some uh, maintenance issues. Um, they, weren't, they weren't maintained, they weren't really played. The owner had owned them for decades and they were really, I think, just put in this room and they weren't played and they weren't maintained. So there's uh, some work to be done on them to bring them back up to a condition that's um, about as good as they can be. I think that the Colombo Latin American percussion instruments are remarkable. There are things about them that are just a bit unique and um, I find them very interesting, especially in terms of being vintage drums. One of the exciting things for me about acquiring these instruments is that they're Latin percussion instruments that are actually made in Latin America. Today, most of the mass-produced Latin percussion instruments are made in Thailand, and the parent companies are in the United States, in Germany, places like that. One of the interesting things about the way that he made his congas, or tumbadoras, is that he had a wine cask maker make the shells for him. Once the shells were delivered to him, then he would do the turning, lathing, sanding, uh, and finishing, and attach the hardware and, and everything else. Juan Jose Colombo went on to make thousands of drum sets. He took inspiration from the older Gretsch and Slingerland drums. I'm going to do an overview of some of the design features of the congas. On the top, the heads are mule heads, a nice rich um, dark red color. These crown hoops are um, comfort hoop style. They're curved on the top, easy on the hands. A bit of an unusual profile to the shape of them. Not too unusual, but um, gives me the feeling of kind of like the interior of a sports car with um, chrome trim and a black leatherette finish. The tuning rods or lugs are actually turnbuckles. So they tighten uh, both from the top and the bottom of the body of the turnbuckle. You simply put the key in this hole and then turn it either way to loosen or tighten. 
And so therefore, it will tighten and loosen twice as fast as your regular conga lug because you've got both threads working in or out as you go. Really nice side plates on the shelves. Nice oval, simple design. Um, one of the things about the lugs is that the threads, as you get it in tune, the threads actually disappear into the body of the turnbuckle. So it's kind of a nice design feature. You just don't see the threads once you've got it tuned up. Seven tuning rods on each drum, which to me seems very unusual. Interesting look to them as well, the way that they hook into the side plates and they hook into the crown hoop. Then you've got the leatherette finish. It, that is very interesting, um, not only because of the way it looks, which is a very, very nice look, very elegant look, but also in order to fit and apply this to the shell, has to be done very precisely. With the drum set, if you've got the snare or tom-toms or a bass drum and you're putting a wrap on it, the curve only goes one way. The curve just goes around the circumference of the drum. But with a conga, of course, it's wider at the top of the drum. It has a rounded belly and then it goes narrower. Then we've got these additional steel bands which are adjustable. There's a bolt on the other side of the drum and you can tighten or loosen these bands if you wanted to. And then of course another chrome uh, band at the bottom that serves as a base. You notice at the bottom that the profile comes along here and then here the uh, shell is actually thicker. So it's been lathed and sanded in this nice shape here and then brought back out again here to make the drum wider and then it's fitted with the chrome base. Really nice drum badge, well designed, very elegant. The whole thing looks like, you know, you might want to put on a tuxedo and a bow tie to get behind these to play them. The stand, custom made stand, it's got two, um, two rods or masts and the, uh, the conga slides onto it much like a tom-tom on, um, on a bass drum mount. This block here is, um, is cut on both sides according to the circumference and diameter size of each one of these drums. It's not the same on both sides. This one is, is wider and this one is a tighter dimension on the, on the curve. And they're fitted with a nice luxurious red felt band. This block that you see in the middle, which is actually, you can't see it from that angle I don't think, but it's actually got a, a curve cut into it here to give it an elegant shape. This block, which is about an inch thick, is um, solid aluminum. I put a magnet on there to just to double check to see if it was steel or, or what it was, but it's, um, it's aluminum or an alloy that's not magnetic. It's adjustable in height. It has a large um, thumb screw in the back there. The, um, the mounts that are attached to the shell of the drums sit on a thick um, rubber washer on top of this support. So you don't get any metal on metal contact except for these two rods or masts, which are knurled. Um, and there is supposed to be a thumb screw there. They're missing currently, but I'll have to um, find a replacement for those. So the stand, elegant, chrome, um, comes down to a tripod 
leg or three uh, extended feet that have wheels. They are solid stave drums and the staves are, they vary a little bit in width, but they're about three quarters of an inch, uh, more or less. And one last thing about the design of the shell is it's a little bit more conical, I think, than um, most of the tumbadoras that we see around. Not all of them. I've, I've seen some other vintage congas from Latin America um, that are that are quite narrow and, and tube-like um, compared to uh, modern congas or other congas that have a wider belly in here. But this has got quite a conical uh, taper to it and a narrow base. It affects the sound a little bit. Um, gives it a slightly different, uh, let's say, color or tonality.